Last Friday, Vince is the operations manager for Sagan, and then you'll also be joined by a recruiter from Sagan as well. Really pumped about this live. Part of our routine is I want to know where you all are joining us from, so just type your country in the comment section, and I would really love to know where all of our viewers are joining us from. We've got Benche from Kenya welcome we've got tando from south africa shibe from south africa hi shibe we've got lean from kenya latifa from uganda bincy do you want to introduce yourself for the people who are meeting you for the very first time so if you're joining us for the very first time this live is specifically about sagan and just a little bit about sagan sagan is a global talent company that places candidates with small and medium businesses in the the US. I've been raving and yapping about Sagan for the past month and I'm really glad to report that they have placed a number of our followers already so I'm super grateful like if you're winning I'm winning I get so much joy out of that if you're interested in landing a remote job with Sagan then yes you want to be in this live and you want to watch it till the end Riti I'm gonna get to your questions in a bit but for now I want to pass over the mic to Bincy and then bravo you can introduce yourselves the recruiter is Sophia and Sophia is having a little bit of trouble with the video normal so she's kind of figuring that out hi everyone my name is Vincy I'm the operations manager head of operations actually for Sagan we are like Lorraine said a global talent placement company we hire from different locations in the world like India Pakistan Philippines Africa Latin America we are basically here to talk about working online, working with US-based companies, going about your interview process. That's one of the reasons why Sophia is here, so that she can talk to you a little bit more about why do we need to do the intro videos and what questions do we ask in the interview process and things like that. So I would really love to hear from you guys what your questions are regarding the selection process. <laughs> That's a very good intro. If you've ever sent your application through Sagan, I also want to know what your experience has been. If you're here, and you haven't sent your application through Sagan, you want to head on over to our website. The link is on my bio. Just check them out. I checked them out before we joined this live. They currently have 24 openings. I'm sure there is a lot more openings. Everyone. And we are now seeing that we are getting a lot more requests for executive assistants and customer service folks. Mm -hmm. Rain, could you let Sophia in? So this is basically your life. If you've got any question regarding Sagan, hiring process, the selection process, put it in the comment section and I will respond to that. Welcome, Sophia. I don't know if at least you can hear you and you can still drop the gems. We've got a question from user ta -da -da -da. How can I join? And maybe let's start with that question, Sophie, if you don't mind. One is interested in joining Sagan or sending in their application. What is the first step that they should take? They should go into our careers page, apply to whichever position they're interested in. They will be asked for a very short introduction video. It's one minute long. And I'm so glad that you mentioned the introductory video. A number of people are like, why do I need to do the introductory video, Sophia? Why That's do a very I popular need question. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's like the burning question. And I know Bincy touched a little bit on it in our last live and she mentioned that what you guys are looking for is personality, how you communicate, how you're able to express yourself. Is there any other thing that you guys are looking for and why is an introductory video? super important to say that that pretty uh, pretty much sums it it's a way for us to like get a feel of the candidate is like uh, they will be suitable for that position or not customer service role someone that's very outgoing and, and there are other positions where that is not a requirement or a need for it, it allows us to to get a better sense of who you are what I'm getting, Sophia, is the introductory video helps you check whether the individual is the right fit for the job in terms of personality, again, how you communicate and how you express yourself. And that is different per job opportunity that you guys post. It's a very short video. So then in an interview, we would see like everything else more in depth. Sophia, to respond to this question, what do you look out for in an interview? We've got Michael joining us from Zimbabwe, Geraldine from Kenya. Thank you guys for joining. 
Sophia, we've got another question from Riti, and Riti is asking, how do we answer the hourly expected rate? Pretty straightforward. What is your, your salary expectation, uh, ideally in dollars, depending on the role, the experience you have? Um, I think cool. I can provide a little bit more context over there uh, in terms of like mm-hmm. the rate. So uh, if you are looking at like you're a fresher, you have no experience at all, you like there's nothing that you bring to the table in terms of like yourself, you cannot expect to have like, you know, a higher hourly rate, right? Because you're not bringing experience. So yeah. if you are a fresher or like one to two years experience, you can expect anywhere between like five to eight dollars an hour is what we have seen from clients. Uh, but let's say you are somebody who has like three to four years of experience you are very good at what you do you you know that you are extremely good at the job and that you can perform then definitely ask for whatever you think is the right fit for you what is that amount that will make you happy at that job and if it's ridiculous we'll tell you that it's ridiculous if it's fair we'll tell you that it's fair and Mm -hmm. if it's too low we'll actually tell you that it's too low because we don't want candidates to feel like they are being taken advantage of that's not Mm -hmm. something that we want to do and so if you are quoting like i've had candidates who quote like they're very fresh to this very very new to this they'll be ready to work for like two dollars an hour and like during the interview we'll actually tell them that hey that's way too low you know you could possibly like increase it a little bit so we will actually like talk to you about that and if that's a question that you want to ask you in an email or something where it's like hey i don't really know the rate for this i don't even know like what i should quote just talk to us like let us know and we'll guide you we are happy to do that as well and i really love the transparency at the end of the day if the candidate is happy at the job we are happy we have yeah. placed a candidate and like we want you guys to be like the person that's working there to be long-term members of the team right mm-hmm. and so it doesn't help that if you feel taken advantage of so that's our philosophy basically so guys i know we are all very desperate to land a remote job but just from what bincy has said and sophia quote your worth if you don't know your worth you head on over to glassdoor and just such whatever role you're applying for look at the market trade but yeah be confident in your abilities and in your skills between five to eight dollars per hour for someone who doesn't have any experience is a really fair rate i've noticed that like let's say you uh, watch all these videos with like us based content creators mm-hmm. they will be talking about rates in their location right Yes. And so a lot of this is like very, just because it's a U.S. company, it does not mean that they would pay U.S. rates, right? Mm-hmm. U.S. rates is for a U.S. based candidate because their cost of living is so much. They have to account for a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. So think about what's fair in like your location. It will be a little bit higher than like what a local company would pay. So that's what we have seen. Uh, yeah. So depending on that, yeah, you can quote whatever it is that you think is right. Absolutely. And I remember one of the candidates that you guys placed, so this is going to be all completely anonymous because it is confidential. I remember the individual went from earning 55,000 Kenya shillings and now the individual is going to be earning 250,000 Kenya shillings. So clearly they pay way, way above market rate. And then you've got a question from Tando whom I think is joining us from South Africa. Tando is interested and Tando is a recent graduate from the University of Joburg. Can Tando get a remote job through Seikan? I guess that will be your question, Tando. If you have like zero experience, if you're just graduating and this is like your first time doing this, I would suggest um, get some experience, maybe at least a one year of experience and Mm -hmm. then apply because okay. that'll like increase your chances a lot more than okay. like being a complete fresher and like just starting with like a remote job. It's always, okay. uh, when you get into a remote job, there's the feeling of like missing out an office job, the office culture, the, the coffee talk and friends and all that. And you will like down the line kind of think about, hey, should I just go into an office and you know, should I get into all that? So I would Uh say maybe start off with like a local job, something office based and Uh then like transition to remote because Uh it'll give you a lot more experience in dealing with people and like communicating and all that. And to be fair, just even me, from my experience as a recruiter, when you're getting yourself a remote job, they really want someone who knows how to do the job. Remote companies don't want to spend a lot of time training you. Yes, they'll have an amazing onboarding program, but they expect some level of delivery just right from once you join them. So yeah, I totally agree with Bincy. Tando, if you haven't done any internship, I would advise that you go do that first 
and make sure that your internship is in depth and you know you're taking over responsibilities so that you get to know how exactly the workplace is and how people actually feel when they've got like kpis and responsibilities because that will play a really bigger role when you're applying for remote opportunities we've got a question from shamsa and sophia maybe you want to take this after how long should one expect feedback after the first interview Usually within a week, we uh, share the information with the uh, client who's hiring and we, as soon as we get a uh, response from them, we will send you uh, an email either way. Of course, you're always welcome to send us uh, an email, follow up if you're eager to know. Usually takes a week. Hi, Kim. Kim is actually one of our recruiters. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, <Welcome. laughs> another recruiters. <laughs> then Ruter is asking, do you guys have any data roles currently? What we have seen is that data ro data entry, pure data entry is uh -huh. usually not a very popular role is what uh -huh. we've seen. Uh, it might be with something else, which is usually like an executive assistant or like CRM administrator or something else. So it's usually uh -huh. grouped together with something else, but a pure uh -huh. data entry role might not be something that's popular. At least with mm -hmm. Sagan clients, it's not really that popular. Mostly mm -hmm. because we deal with clients that are in the small and medium businesses. A lot of data entry might be with like larger companies. Mm -hmm. and that's not really something that we deal with. It might be grouped together with something else, but yeah. pure data entry, not as much. Rutara, if you are basically pure data entry or data analyst, Whereas it's not, um, if you're just purely into data, whereas it, it might not be possible to do that in Sagan, you can still get remote opportunities basically from our website. Yeah, so tons of options. Riti is asking how much can I quote hourly to avoid overquoting and underquoting? And I think Binsi answered that beautifully. They're very transparent with their uh, compensation packages. So just quote uh, whatever you feel you're capable, how you value yourself, and if you've overquoted, Vince said that they will let you know if they can proceed with you further. But I don't think that is going to be a hindrance on whether you get the job or not. They will communicate. John, which positions are available? Head on over to their website and it's saganrecruitment.com and just check out their openings. They currently have 24 openings. Uh, Tandra is asking, do you provide laptops? No, we don't. You <laughs> have to have your own equipment. So you would have to have a laptop, you would have to have a headset and mm -hmm. keyboard, whatever it is that you need to do your work. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, we don't provide laptops. I don't think that is like unique to Sagan because even the company that was working for remotely, they didn't provide laptops. So you do need to have your own laptop. And I only say you need three things when applying for a remote job, a laptop, a good Wi-Fi, and three, an office space or a quiet space to be able to put in the work and hours that you're required to do so. So Lynn is asking, I have applied to multiple sites for a CSR, but I always get regrets. What am I doing wrong? Any tips? I can take this. I think Lynn, the issue could be your CV. And I want to hear from Sophia when you're in an interview with the candidate, what are some of the pointers that you look out for and maybe can help lean with that? So that's a great question. Oh, first of all, it, we look for skills and qualifications. So basically making sure that they've got the expertise needed for the job. The CV is very important for that. It's uh, with the introduction video, the first screening that we will. It's not just about the rest of me when we're on the interview. I'm also checking if you are a cultural fit for the company or the client. Uh, this, of course, is like the way for like long term success, right? Communication is a big item too. Uh, we love seeing candidates that can express themselves clearly. And there are other skills that we're looking out for. So uh, problem solving skills, how do you adapt to changes, to challenges. Great to see when someone is like passionate about what they're doing or very excited about an opportunity. I think that answers your question, maybe? Yeah, it does beautifully. And just in case you are not taking notes, I took notes for you. What Sophia has actually mentioned, these are some of the things that she's looking out for. Cultural fit, 
communication, problem solving skills, adaptability, and personality. So if I were applying for an opportunity with Sagan, I would take those keywords, put them in my resume, and just cross my fingers. When you land an interview, make sure that your personality comes through real strong. I don't know, Vince, if you wanted to add something. <laughs> I, I um, want no. to mention that our first interview is like just this call to getting to know you. So sometimes, of course, the interviewing process is always nerve wracking. But if someone here has already been in one of our interviews, you'll see just a conversation. We want to uh, know you. We want you to feel comfortable. And like, that's it. So that's the best tip. Like, let your personality come through. We <laughs> try not to make our interviews like interviews. Like, you know, you don't have to be so stressed out that you are all sweating and like shivering and then you have no idea what to talk about. We would yeah. love to hear from you. We would love to hear stories from you. So let's say like uh, for a customer service uh, role, we ask you about, uh, talk to me about like one of the problems that you handled, right? Some mm -hmm. people are like, oh, I had a customer call me with a problem. I escalated it with my supervisor and I handled it. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. That's not what we want to hear. We want to hear the people that screamed at you and made you cry and then like you took a moment, you took a breath and then like what exactly did you do? You want to hear yesterday? this? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yesterday I think I, we had an interview where the candidate was like uh, the customer was on a call with me for like four hours and I was about to cry and I didn't know, know what to do and I'm like yeah that's real you know. So if you yeah. to be real with us like you don't have to be the whole you don't have to put forward a customer service face with us. <laughs> love to Yo, if that isn't the best advice, just be real. Think about, think of it like you're talking to a friend. You might just get the job. So if you're here and you've been invited for an interview, now you know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> First friendships and just think of it like you, if it's Sophia, think of Sophia as a friend and just ignore whatever. Just, yeah, be the Lulu in short. We've got a question from Alia. Alia is asking any virtual assistant openings. I saw them. They currently have one virtual assistant opening, two executive assistants. Yeah, and then Binsi said that more executive assistant openings are coming up. So you want to head on over to their website and check them out and just have your CV ready. If at all you don't see a good opening and you're a good virtual assistant or a customer service agent, we would love to hear from you. So at the very bottom of our website, there is a free application there where you can just put in an application without any job and mm -hmm. we will definitely contact you if you are the right fit for any of our openings. And don't That's think fine. that just because you were rejected for one opening that you may mm -hmm. not be considered for others. We actually mm -hmm. keep our talent pool very engaged and active. So we will go back and like take a look to see if your, your profile fits other jobs. Awesome. And that reminds me, when you do send your application to Sagan, under uh, who referred you, it is yours truly, <laughs> yes. Savannah. Okay. <laughs> Malo is asking, what are the possibilities of landing senior role? For example, a commercial manager. And I want you to take that could be earning, I think, $6,000 monthly and above. I would like you to take this on either Sophia or Bincy because I did see you've got a marketing manager role on your website. We do have senior roles, but they are pretty rare. Uh, it's not like a very common uh, role. And mm -hmm. if we do have it, like we usually advertise it on the website. So whenever we have it like it's always on the website and typically in with senior roles we would try to go through linkedin for recruitment uh just because mm -hmm. there's more candidates in there and we would like go through like active sourcing interested in like applying for those they definitely should mm -hmm. i think we have a candidate here that we just did an interview with Muthoni. That was, oh yeah uh, she's been putting up a few uh comments in here <laughs> Awesome. Harold says that he's actually hired a virtual assistant in Kenya. Again, what would be the standard rate for a virtual assistant? I would, my personal opinion, I would say if, if I am applying for a role in to say again as a virtual assistant, I would quote anything between six to nine dollars. Is that fair? It is. Yeah. Okay, cool. Victoria is joining us from Uganda. Welcome. T Wang is joining us from Bhutan. Asideo from Ghana. Thank you for joining us. We've got Chinko is joining from Nigeria and Chinko has 10 years experience in accounting and 
managerial jobs. So I guess they're asking, can they land a remote opportunity with Zagan? Accounting, bookkeeping, invoicing assistance, accounts payables, account receivables, these are all like very popular roles. So mm -hmm. yes, definitely you can apply for these. With accounting, with these so sorts of roles, we call them functional roles. You have to be very, very careful about your CV because mm -hmm. accounting roles are like detail oriented roles, right? So we've had like tons of people that send in a CV and then their CV has like spelling mistakes and it looks weird, it's formatted weird. So we are like, if you are so detail oriented, why mm -hmm. wouldn't you take five minutes to actually look at your own CV and like fix it, right? Mm -hmm. So just make sure that, you know, your CV is actually good enough for, mm -hmm. again, a graphic designer's role. We would love to see like something of your personality come through within your graph, your CV, right? Or your mm -hmm. portfolio even. So if mm -hmm. you're a graphic designer and you submit a CV without a portfolio, we're like, um, you know, yeah. so show off, like show off what you have, you know? I guess Sophie is going to talk to us about what sets a CV apart. But in my personal opinion, in an ATS friendly resume, it's quite simple if you can't really flower it up. So if you're a designer, then you definitely want to have a portfolio or a link to your website in your CV. That way your personality comes through. Adiboy is saying, everyone is saying that we need one year experience. So where should they get? And I hear you Adiboy. It's a very legit question. The answer to that we did just piece of our live on Friday with Bincy. My advice was, you know, get yourself an internship. Use that as part of your experience. As long as your internship was in depth and you were engrossed in their jobs. We've got T Wang is saying uh, T Wang has 10 years experience in IT. Which is a very interesting question, Bincy or Sophia, because I haven't seen any IT opening. We are actually not technical recruiters, it's something that we um, tell most people. Mm -hmm. So we are not good with like software recruitment. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why we don't take um, IT jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, but if one of our clients talk to us about a requirement like that and then come to us, then we would definitely um, do that. But as a recruitment company as a whole, like if you are specifically looking for IT jobs, I think it, you would be better like off like looking at other recruitment uh, companies or I think even your website probably has a few. Yeah, we do have. Tandu is actually asking, can they do second jobs part time? We don't really have a lot of part time jobs, but we do have mm -hmm. them like rarely. So depends on, I would say like refresh our website maybe once a month and then mm -hmm. see like what comes in. Uh, typically mm -hmm. we would add jobs every two weeks. That's around mm -hmm. the time when we add new jobs. And so yeah, have a look at the website and if there are jobs, it'll be mentioned that it's a part-time opportunity. But it's not very common though. Nona has experience from Amazon for a year and is looking for another job. If you have Amazon experience and you are good with project management, we are actually looking for you. Precious is joining us from South Africa and has experience in retail and call center. Can Precious get a job? I don't see why not. Absolutely. If you have a good CV, if you have a good intro video, you can talk about your experience, send it over mm -hmm. to us. We will interview you and if you are the right fit, definitely. There's no reason why you cannot land a remote job, right? It's not this magical unicorn that you have to like chase it and nothing like that. It's just like yeah. a regular job. Instead of like going to an office, you would just be on your computer. That's it. Yeah, cool. So for Harold and Rutere, Harold is looking for a web development job. Rutere is looking for a data scientist or data analytics. Are there growth opportunities in remote work? Which is a really interesting question. Is there like career growth opportunities, particularly for the roles that are being advertised on Sagan's uh, website. I'm probably like the best person to like talk about that because I started as a virtual assistant. I was part time. My only job was like creating a report. That was it. My boss only wanted like one report. Okay. And that was my whole job. So it, it was like the report and that was it. Right. But mm -hmm. I started getting into other jobs. I then became like a full time virtual assistant. Then I moved on into operations coordinator at the mm -hmm. same company. So I was handling day to day operations. I then moved on to being the operations manager at the company. Then I moved on into being the chief of staff at the company. <laughs> now I am seven years running and I'm the head of operations for Sagan. So are there growth opportunities within Sagan as a company? Yes. Are there growth opportunities within all these other companies? Definitely yes, because all these people are bringing you on as team members. 
like you are outside of the company no you are within the company and mm-hmm. if you are performing well and you show that potential to like grow into a another role definitely mm-hmm. opportunity there we've got ann has 7 years experience legal experience a diploma in public administration and yeah i guess you can still land a remote job i think we have one other recruiter here she might have us to join the live Snaz is looking to transition from office to remote work in my LinkedIn should I get a separate link I don't think so Just make sure that your LinkedIn uh, profile actually matches your resume so that you know they need to be twins and not sisters I do have a question do you sponsor like, I guess the uh, quick answer to that question is no because you get to work from wherever you are Karim is asking can I buy a job I'm sure what buy a job means So can they either pay someone and then they get the job I'm not really sure of the concept but probably not it is so unethical and yeah I guess uh, we actually we actually had an incident you know we had oh. uh, somebody come on an interview she was amazing she was selected for the role uh, we had the initial kickoff call with her with the client uh-huh. and all of us together she was supposed to be going doing the onboarding uh-huh. and then we we actually realized that it was another person they looked kind of similarish oh. and we were like ah oh, this is not the right person this is different and we were like oh my god and you know what we did we actually what? terminated them the next day <gasps> so it's like <laughs> sure if something like that happens and you are like found out and that's that's kind of your end of the work with Sagan right so yeah. i'm not sure why you would do that um i would say go the direct route um go the proper way and then if you're selected you're selected if not wait for another opportunity or like apply for another opportunity there are tons of jobs out there you don't need to buy oh my god <laughs> can you imagine landing a job and then the next day you're fired because you Losing did something it. stupid <laughs> as that exactly. and you never ever ever be able to work with Seek and again now mind you i know pinsy says like there are a ton of openings like remote jobs but remember you're competing globally so the competition is fierce and you need to be like top talent to get a remote job so if you waste your one opportunity man some opportunities don't come twice like yo so karimi don't leave the kenyan mindset don't buy jobs work on your resume send it out put in the effort put in the work and you will land a job a 99 is asking are you able um whether the live is recorded and you want to watch it later yes it's going to be recorded i think i'm going to upload this live on our youtube channel so you want to head on there as well or to you sofia what sets a cv apart from one to the other okay so i think the first thing is clear formatting like a clean organized cv is the best you can have making mm-hmm. sure it's easy to read that you use clear mm-hmm. headings bullet points that's like the first thing you, like when you're screening a cv it's, uh, it's usually something you do very fast so mm-hmm. if it's a very long cv or it's full of information important things might go unseen it's relevant experience uh so whenever we're checking a cv we're on the look at look out for experience that aligns with the role of course there are some positions that allow you to have a different experience to what is being asked virtual assistant executive assistant i saw a comment they were saying they have been on uh sales for a long time Mm-hmm. that could be relevant too you get a lot of uh skills and and you learn a lot from those jobs that could uh, help you to get one of these other jobs um so yeah experience is one of the things we we check um education certifications that is uh relevant for some roles mm, not for all of them but uh adding that information is always very important then like the skills section whether it's technical skills languages um other talents that you may have very important as well a very good tip to make your uh cv stand out is customizing it for the job you're applying to so um the tip you you gave earlier like using keywords it's uh very important sometimes you don't mention 
uh, some skills you may have, some tools you use that could be that thing that sets you apart. So go ahead and do that. Like check really well the job description. And if you see you were looking for something specific and you have that, make sure that you're mentioning that on your CV. Um, what else? Uh, well, as I think that's as pretty important, Sophia, which is the tools, right? Because you are now working in a remote environment. We need to know that you have used Slack, you have used Teams, you have used Gmail, you have used Outlook. We need to know yeah. that you're good at Google Sheets or Excel, or uh, there are tons of people out there that don't know how to use all these tools. And uh -huh. so we need to know whether, you know, we need to train you for all of these things or whether you come already. So even if it's like a basic tool that you've used, which is like, let's say Canva to like edit something for yourself for your TikTok or even like mention that, that you've used Canva because now uh, let's say you are like a virtual assistant that can also do some social media stuff. Uh -huh. can have a better chance of being hired because you know you have something that we are looking for right uh -huh. so whatever the tool section is something that nobody actually includes in their cv but we would love to for you to like do that just because you're applying for a remote job right and i like that you brought that um up in c because i do cv reverbs and one of the things that i usually do in the cvs that i work on is to include the softwares and tools that would make you favorable for working remotely. So, mm -hmm. Karimi, because I've seen your comments, if you're here, I usually advise people to at least send out three applications in a day when they're looking for a remote job. Like I mentioned, the competition is fierce, and at the end of the day, it's a numbers game. So, if you're not putting in the effort to send out your applications, rest assured, your journey on landing a remote job is going to be even longer and even tougher. You're gonna to get discouraged at the end of the day. Um, and one of the things that when you get regrets, because you're definitely gonna get regrets, yeah, you're not gonna land every other opportunity. Whether your CV is done by a professional like myself or you've just done it by yourself, you're still gonna get regrets. Even I get regrets, but rather than looking at it uh, from no, am I not good enough? What not? I look at it as a feedback and you re-strategize. It could be that you're applying for, say, your marketing role and your CV is customer service. So you do need to identify which career path you want to get on and then stick to that. Give yourself three months. In the case of Sagan, give yourself two weeks. And if you qualify, then yeah, you land yourself a remote job. Now, I was going through the comments and I've summarized the questions. We've got Shibe and a few other people were asking about time zones. Is there a specific time zone that uh, you are hiring for or is it open? Okay, so as we work with uh, US clients, we will typically have US time zones uh, work schedules that will be specified in each job that we have posted on our website there is usually a lot of flexibility and uh, if something important comes up then there are ways to um, making it work but yes you have to have a u.s time zone time zone is usually pst pacific standard time eastern standard time mountain standard time central time right four time zones we may have clients from all those time zones and depends on uh, who the client is you will be working at like different times but typically you should be available at like business hours like you should expect to be available at business hours which apps can one use to make their cv ats friendly nona i do cv reverb so if you're interested in that you can dm me and we will have a conversation outside of this live uh we had a lear who was asking for the hourly rate either for a virtual assistant or executive assistant and like Bincy mentioned it's anything between five to eight dollars i believe either way if, if you feel like you're worth more than that you can always quote whatever amount and then if you're overpriced they are kind enough and transparent enough to let you know in the interview process i don't think that would hinder you from either being placed as long as you get to have a conversation with them can you land a job as a copywriter as a marketer healthcare hr computer engineer yes and no basically with Sagan they are focused on non-tech roles so if you're a non-tech 
gully or bro you want to head on over there however if you're still a tech gully or bro you want to check out my website and we do post a ton of remote openings as well mm -hmm. we are starting to have some um, marketing jobs come in mm -hmm. uh, mostly marketing manager or like ads facebook ads manager things like that and mm -hmm. we are also starting to get some like billing coordinators um, insurance coordinators and things like that so mm -hmm. those are some things that are like in the pipeline and they're coming in if you're interested in any cv revamp dm me uh we do cv revamps we do linkedin optimization we do career coaching um yeah just check out our website we have a ton Let, let's tell uh, the viewers what are some of the benefits that you get when you're working for sagan um, or when you're placed with sagan so uh, with Sagan, if you're working um, like directly through us, so we have two different placement uh, opportunities. You can work directly through us or we will place you directly with the client. Uh, with directly through us, we uh, will offer healthcare reimbursements. Um, you will be provided with uh, paid holidays, paid leaves, things like that. And you will have a lot of mentorship and support opportunities. We have uh -huh. a huge community of global talent folks that you can talk to, you can ask questions, you can just chit chat and like um, do all that with mm -hmm. and with a lot of our clients uh, they will also add in like their own benefits uh, depending on their com their own company so there's definitely things there beyond like just regular hourly rates mm. awesome i love that um now for those of you who are asking where can you get these jobs again Give me a follow. <laughs> I think I should start with that. Give me a follow and you can head on over to the link on my bio. It will take you to our website, beyondthesavannah.co.ke. And on there, we've actually featured Sagan and you can check them out. They've got a ton of openings. Last I checked this evening, they had 24 openings. And yeah, I'm sure you're bound to get an opportunity that suits you. We've got a question. Do you accept non-phone jobs or do you have non-phone jobs? 50% of jobs on there are non-phone. Even if you have to call somebody, it's usually like a quick, it's not like telecaller type of jobs or anything. It's usually a quick phone call to like a vendor or a customer or something like that. Customer service uh -huh. and sales support will always be phone related jobs. Anything uh -huh. else, it'll be mentioned on there if it's a phone related job, because we will specifically look for accent in those cases. And so mm -hmm. we mentioned on there. And then we've got a question from Alia, and Alia is asking, what's the difference between virtual assistant jobs and an executive assistant job? A lot of it is interchangeable. Um, mm -hmm. Virtual assistant, executive assistant, it's very interchangeable. Executive assistants might work a little bit more with C-suite executives, meaning the CEO, CFO, COO of the companies usually. And then rest of like virtual assistant, if you might be working with a managerial level or like a supervisory level. That could be a distinction, but some folks, they just interchangeably use it. Mm. We try not to use the word virtual assistant. We try to use executive assistant or administrative assistant or something like that. Shiba is asking, do the benefits such as healthcare benefits cater for the country you're in, or is it just US based? Which I think is a really important question. Perhaps you want to clarify on that, Binzi. It doesn't make sense for us to provide healthcare benefits that are US based, right? Mm -hmm. We provide sure. healthcare benefits for you, so it's healthcare reimbursement, um, and so basically you would get your healthcare, and then we would like pay for it. That's mm -hmm. how it usually works. Yeah. Not many remote companies will offer healthcare, either in terms of reimbursement or just offer it as a package, because I guess you know, like preempt whether like it doesn't make sense to them or the cost is too much, which goes to speak to Sagan's values and how they treat their employees, which is really cool. I think that is just, if I were looking for employment, that would be one other motivating factor for me to head on over to Sagan's website and check out their openings and send out my application. Yo, okay? And yeah, even be motivated to record that one minute intro video. Lorraine, so we have to drop off shortly. Uh, we have oh. another meeting, yeah. Okay, cool. Maybe maybe one more question because yes. I had one more question for, for Sophia. One more question and then the second team drops off and we can remain till 9.30. What are the stages in the hiring process? So we've said like, yes, there's an ATSCV, an intro video. Then there is a, a first interview with Sagan's recruiter. Is there another interview? 
it depends on the role there might be one more interview with uh, the client directly uh, and it's that's usually the whole process um, for some roles when they were when we are uh, looking for maybe a more technical um, skill you might have an, a short exercise to complete uh, but it's usually the short interview with us and uh, a short interview with the client. We try also, to keep it like to two interviews just because we don't want candidates to go through like seven interviews and eight interviews and all that. So we try to keep it uh, one interview with us, maximum of two interviews with the client. And that test is usually like a 15 to 30 minute test, very short, very simple. And uh, the whole idea is that we want to make the process easy for the candidates so that we actually get good candidates. And so, yeah, uh, it shouldn't be too hard for the candidates. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Sophia and Binsi, for joining our live today. I hope if you're here, if you're watching, that you actually found value in this live. And you're going to excuse them because they do have to join another meeting. This live is going to run till 9.30. So, yeah, we're still here. <laughs> but thank you so much. We really appreciate Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Lorraine. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'll see you bye. then. Bye, everyone. Bye. So um, you can post your questions with regards to remote work and I will answer. But I really hope that you guys found value in this live. When it comes to the one minute video, the introductory video, I actually did a mock of, you know, how I would do my introductory video. And basically, let your personality shine what they're looking for just you know we've had from sake and steam what they're looking for is your personality how well you communicate how well you're able to express yourself remember it's just one minute so you want to use that to your best to yeah your best advantage but the other thing that i would advise is because it is pre-recorded you want to record that video as much as possible until you feel comfortable with it nom sir i'm glad that you're finding this to be very educative and informative thank you so much do you have four outside the u.s hey legal all the opportunities that i post are hiring in africa in the emea time zone so that means europe middle east and africa and globally worldwide so that means you can work from literally anywhere in the world the reason why i do this is because i want to get as many people of color as many africans in the remote workspace things like dei diversity equity and inclusion are really important to remote companies and so the more people of color get in there the better for them the better ranking they will get i don't know if you're comfortable with me sharing the information but Mudoni has experience with Seikan. Comment below if you're comfortable with me sharing that information. Can you read what they look for in an interview? The ones that I wrote, Karen. So what Sophia said that they look out for in an interview, one is the cultural fit. Two is the communication, like how your communication skills, be it written or verbal and preferably in English. So if you've got like a Tanzanian, and this is by no means throwing any shade to our Tanzanian brothers and sisters, yeah? But if you are on this live and you kind of struggle with your English, you wanna work on that. So yeah, your communication skills, your problem solving skills, your adaptability and your personality. And they did mention that they want the tea, they want stories, if you're applying for a customer service role, if you're applying for a virtual assistant role, an executive assistant role, which is involves you, know, you dealing with people, dealing with customers, whether internal or external, they want how you've actually faced a problem and you solve that problem. I'm sure one of the questions that they ask is, tell us an example of a difficult situation and how you manage that situation because that just goes to show one your problem solving skills to your adaptability and three your resilience so give out the tea they literally said they don't want you to sugarcoat it and just be overly general give them the tea spill the tea yeah i hope that answers your question karen Haley is in the caribbean yes you can they actually have 
a role in Jamaica, but like they mentioned, as long as you're able to work in the PST time zone, which I don't think Caribbean is different in terms of the time zone. Shiba is asking, is it smart to apply to three or more remote jobs in the same company? If your CV is aligned to those jobs, then you want to do so, go ahead and do so. However, if you've got a CV that is curated to a customer service role and then you're applying for a marketing role, yeah, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. So if you've got, say, customer service CV and you want to apply for an executive assistant role or a virtual assistant role, makes sense. Those roles are aligned and they do interlink quite a bit. Yeah, but if you are an accountant and then you've got a CV that is curated for accounting jobs and then you want to apply for a HR role, doesn't make sense yeah in my consultation calls i usually ask what role do you want to get whatever role that you want to get whichever career path you've decided then we curate your cv to be aligned with that career path so moving forward the jobs that you send out will be aligned to the title that you've put under your resume just to make you you need to curate your cv and you need to um make it aligned to your career path otherwise you're just wasting your time um and regardless of the opportunities that you send out i doubt it you land um an interview um let's say i'm doing the introductory video my name is Lorraine. I have been in the HR profession for over eight years, working both locally and globally. What I enjoy most in the HR profession is talent management and coaching. The reason why I enjoy those two is because I believe that that is how you can impact the company's bottom line. It's good enough that recruiters get top talent on board. However, we do need to retain the top talent. And things like company culture are really important and we need to offer a safe space for all our our employees so that they're able to be productive and give us their level best. I look forward to having more in-depth conversations with you in terms of what I can offer Sagan and what I bring to the table. I look forward to hearing from you. That's it. It's literally one minute. I guess you guys see the gist of it. Yeah. So you state your name, you state uh, your current role or your aspiring role or the role that you're applying for, why you feel like you'd be best suited for that opportunity. And for me would be, uh, you know, what I add value to the company and how I plan on saving money. And if you noted how I plan on saving money in whichever come in Sagan would be by pushing out retention. So how do I push out retention? By making sure that we create a company culture that is safe and that people can actually thrive and we actually have people longer. So that's how I plan on saving or making the company money. And and that's why I would be a better fit for that, yeah, for that opportunity. Say they are hiring for a HR role. Yeah, and that's it. And they definitely show appreciation and be like, I really look forward to having a more in-depth conversation. Like you need to show you're interested in talking with them more and you're eager to talk with them more. And that is part of, I guess, showing, letting your personality shine through. So yeah, I hope that helped beauty is you know for some companies they actually have like timing they have timed introductory videos like you do the introductory video on their site so you have literally one shot at it the beauty with Sagan is that you can do the video outside of their platform and then you upload the video so you can have several takes and like they said it's easy like think about it like you're talking to um a friend and how i thought about the question or what what was running behind my mind was how i would answer the interview question tell me about yourself so maybe you want to go with that if it makes it easier tell me about yourself pull out your phone and record that we are also on instagram we've just started our page and i would really appreciate if you could what are some of the challenges that you've been facing when you're applying for remote jobs i really want to know what are some of your challenges uh shibe i hear you no feedback or response from recruiters that's a big thing and sometimes you'll get like 
regrets from the ATS. I mean, that is why they've got the ATS here so that they can manage the whole hiring process more effectively. But then again, how you deal with that is, you know, sometimes you might just be sending out applications not being strategic with how you send out your application so how i take it is i'll take it as a feedback session and uh look at what am i doing that is not working what are some of the things that i'm doing that are not working and then you move on from there sometimes you need to call yourself to the table and see if you're sending like i really said if you're sending 10 applications uh, and you're still not getting a call what are you not doing right yeah because remember it's a game of numbers so is it how is it the jobs that you're targeting so are you burning yourself out by just sending out open applications and things that are not even related to your experience thinking that you land a job which you you're just tiring yourself so call yourself to the table and apply jobs more strategically oh i forgot to mention we actually have a remote work masterclass that is running on the 29th of february we'll talk everything and anything about remote jobs so just in case you're not able to afford my cv river package which is eight thousand kenya shillings if you're east african if you're outside of east africa it's it's eighty dollars you want to register to my class and yeah we'll talk about anything and everything remote jobs including an ATS CV. One study is saying getting a job with hours I can work outside my day job. You gotta struggle with that because most remote companies particularly the legit ones and the ones that are really good would want you to work during your day uh, because things like employee well-being are super important to them work-life balance mental health are super important to them some companies actually have uh, like mental health stipend where you can spend the money on either uh, therapy you can spend it on the gym you can spend it uh, on a spa so things like that are really important to them so for you um wanting to work remotely part-time is tricky it's kidogo difficult as i would say it in swahili it's it's yeah it's a little bit difficult yeah non are regret emails yeah regrets are you're gonna get a ton even i when i was applying for my remote job i got tons of regrets so that is part of the trade it's 